This is Bob Davis 321 coming to you now with a device I'm currently working on. I call it the Arduino Earthquake Predictor. I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing that right because I learned a lot of what I learned from reading and don't always know the correct pronunciation. Uh, back in April of 2000, I wrote an article for Nuts and Bolts magazine with the uh, parallel port earthquake detector or predictor. Um, this plugged in a parallel port of a computer, ran Windows 95, 98, I think even worked with 2000. Basically it had a magnetic sensor that rotated through 360 degrees. My theory was that prior to an earthquake, magnetic fields would shift. And so I recorded magnetic field shifts for probably at least five years, if not 10 years. And uh, via parallel port, having a laptop continuously run in the basement, uh, would run this every minute and then it would cycle through and record all its readings. However, since then I've discovered that's not a very accurate way of predicting earthquakes because the problem is I was taking a reading once per minute and most of the literature is now saying that the, the shifts in the magnetic fields prior to an earthquake occur in the range of 1 hertz to 4 hertz. Uh, in order to get a good sample at 4 hertz, you would have to sample it twice that frequency, so you'd have to have a minimum sampling rate of about 8 hertz. So I set out to develop a solid state, uh, no moving parts earthquake detector, and I built this, oh, probably five years ago. It's not quite showing up, is it? There it is. Um, the initial design, I had eight sensors in a circle going to a, I think it was a 68HC11 based uh, microprocessor that then went via serial port to a PC. Uh, that worked pretty good except I was again, I was of the thought that we needed to see the north, south, and then the perpendicular magnetic field. Basically north, south, perpendicular, and four in between. Uh, the latest design uh, for use with the Arduino that I'm using now and hopefully you can even see us logging here on the screen. Uh, what I have is I have a uh, sensor for north, south, east, west, up, and down. Total of six. Uh, they're Hall effect sensors. They are, uh, uh, there it is, ULN 3503s, radiometric linear Hall effect sensors. Uh, they're really cheap. I don't remember what I even paid for them. I've had them around for a few years. Uh, the current design is I'm actually using those going straight into the Arduino and uh, it varies by typically one or two units in measurement. Unless of course you bring a magnet. You bring a magnet within about an inch or two and you'll see the readings jump all over the place. Uh, the next design I'm working on right now and I don't have it fully implemented is to use an op amp uh, such as an LM353 or 358, uh, the positive of the op amp would go to a two and a half volt reference, the negative would go from the output of the Hall effect magnetic field sensor, and then the output would go over to the Arduino to get uh, to monitor it. The question is the feedback resistor value, and initially I'm using 100K. Uh, there's a 10K between the Hall effect and the op amp, and the 100K feedback resistor gives a gain of 10. Uh, I've seen where some people working on earthquake prediction detection are using uh, frequency selective amplifiers or bandpass amplifiers to narrow down the 1 to 5 hertz range. I'm not going to do that because I also want to keep track of the perpendicular magnetic fields. Uh, the whole theory behind that is there's a lot of quartz in the ground and when rocks like quartz are put under pressure they produce electricity. In fact if you have a grill, gas grill, you have a button you push and it makes a snap sound and it lights the grill. It flexes a piece of quartz and it produces an arc big enough to light the gas. Uh, so a quartz is naturally occurring in the ground and under stress it produces electricity. Whenever electricity flows it produces a magnetic field. Uh, years ago they discovered that you can plot most of the fault lines throughout uh, the world by looking for magnetic fields that are perpendicular. And I've run into this myself. Sometimes you're in the woods using a compass and you go to reuse a compass and the needle sticks straight down and won't rotate freely. That's because there's a perpendicular magnetic field that is stronger than the north-south field. 
and I've seen perpendicular magnetic fields twice as strong as a north-south field on some occasions. So, and then of course, another factor that ties that all in is that animals behave very strangely prior to an earthquake. And studies have shown that animals are sensitive to magnetic fields, so there's a good chance the animals are picking up something happening in the magnetic fields around the area prior to the earthquake. And of course, the whole objective of this project is to make a device to predict earthquakes. And my, uh, one of my next coming, upcoming uh, upgrades on this whole design is to use a shield instead of a separate circuit board. I don't know if you could see too good on the camera, but I'm going to use what they call a shield, which is a board that plugs in the top of their Arduino and uh, gives you a uh, quick, easy connection. And I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly because it's something I've never heard said. Maybe I should uh, look it up someplace <laughs> and see if I'm saying things correctly. I discovered uh, yesterday that I was not saying uh, Peltier. Uh, I was saying fel Felter or something like that for uh, the device that, solid state device that changes temperature used for cooling without any moving parts. So, you know, sometimes when you read things in a book, you don't get the spelling too correct, or pronunciation too correct, so hopefully you'll bear with me. And that's the Arduino Earthquake Prediction Project.